All right, let's continue this. I want to see where this trial will end. It's it's been a wild ride, boy. Varus actually drew. What an epic twist! I mean, I sort of had an idea, but Apollo had to say it out loud for me to truly get it in my head. It was the only way the case so far could make sense. <laughs> okay, so where exactly does this leave us, Apollo? That's what I want to know. Well, the Drew Misham who was killed, which why? Why did he want the money? It would imply he wanted the money, but he did not know if they're the father. Yada yada yada. Uh, wasn't Drew Misham? The forger, basically. Huh? Well, then who was he? Well, he was actually... Doing her nails. So, you really made those forgeries? Yes, for father. <clears throat> I know, it was wrong. Can you tell us how it happened? My father was a painter. I loved painting ever since I was a child. One day, father saw it in me. He saw that I had the talent. The talent for making forgeries? How should I say it? It was not only paintings I made. Given the materials, I could make anything. Anything? Father was so proud, and I, so happy. But, in the end, I was making those. Forgeries. I've never had a good constitution nor personality. I know very little of the world outside my door. Now, because of me, Father is... Do you know about this red envelope? I remember that envelope. It was some time ago. So, you were already a, uh... You were already creating your works back then? <clears throat> I started when I was only 12 years old. So the one who figured out the stamp who was poisoned, that was... Mr. Justice, it's time. To the courtroom, please. Right. Out of time. Wait, Vera! Just one more thing, please! Those three paintings in the studio. I painted those as part of my work. Right. See, we checked them out. And we saw what was underneath. We saw the rough sketches underneath the three finished paintings. I see. Mr. Justice. Yes? Father. He knew of you. Of both of you. Your late father? He was watching, gathering information. All about the Wright and Co. law offices. B but lately we're not doing just law. Yes, you do tricks, gags to amuse, and play piano. Well, they're not really gags. Yet, when father heard, you had resumed the legal business. How pleased he was. Who was Mr. Misham? How am I supposed to know? What if he's that he was daddy's daddy? Nah. Oh, wh who's daddy? Judging from the relative ages involved, I'd say it's highly unlikely. Things are already confusing with all these daddies running around. We know that the victim's daughter, Vera, was the forger. What does this mean for the case? Guess we're about to find out. Court is now back in session. Vera seems pretty tense. She's practically chewing her fingernails clean off. Ugh, I hate it when people do it when characters do that. I'm getting flashbacks from episode 5. Perhaps you could begin by telling us how it all worked. 
How did you set up this Drew Misham Forger persona? There's that stare again. He's drilling more holes into his head. I know it's hard for you, but hey, he's a handsome guy. What's hard? Very well, miss, if you would. Did you really make those detestable forgeries? Perhaps you'd rather answer my question. Were you the one who painted that painting? The remarkably similar one. Ah, uh, yes. I painted it, yes. Why don't I ever see this girl anywhere? I watch a lot of Objection.lol and, and other fan-made stuff like that, but I have literally never seen this girl before anywhere. Actually, I've never seen most Apollo Justice characters apart from Trucy, Apollo, and Gavin. And maybe old Apollo and old Wright as well. Father praised me quite highly for it. So, she was the one who made the forgeries. Yet she did not wish to reveal the truth of their operation. So the victim was a stand-in, a decoy. In the world at large, she was the forger, not her. I've done a bad thing. I have, haven't I? Regardless, we need a little more information. About, for instance, this. You have seen this before, Cha. Ja? Yes, it was in the desk drawer. Very well, you may proceed with your testimony. Tell us everything you know about this envelope. I created things, and Father sold them. This envelope came after my first work. That was other than a painting. Father handled the deal, all of it. I received the stamp that was in that envelope. Ooh! It was after that job that we moved to the current studio. Hmm, there certainly was much of great interest in your testimony. Not that the witness realizes it. Very well, please begin the cross-examination. Right. Okay, I need more information about this forger. It's Drew Mesham. So, these things you were making, uh, I mean, paintings identical to other paintings, right? Forgeries? The closer they were, the happier father was. I was happy too. Still, you're quite young now. When did you begin this work? My first painting was sold when I was 12. Your Honor, she had no idea what she was doing was illegal. Easy there, little attorney. You're not here to defend her for the crime of forgery. Hmm, true. Please, tell us more about this envelope. This envelope that may very well have killed your father. Alright. By other than a painting, you mean? You'd only done paintings up to that point? Yes. But Father had a realization. He noticed my talent extended to making things other than paintings. For instance? <clears throat> For instance, a letter someone had written. Or a fingerprint left upon a cup. Bruh! So that yellow envelope. a signature on a document, a seal upon a letter. None of this makes her sound very innocent at all. And the hundred thousand dollar promised in this letter was the start. The beginning of a new industry for Drew Misham. A new industry? The creation of items to be used in criminal proceedings. Forging evidence in other words. Uh oh. So did Phoenix use her services back then with that card? 
possibly? How do you fucking replicate blood exactly? If that's the case. So, you didn't know how the things you were making were being used. I enjoy painting very much. I think I understand. The Freulein has lived in an unusual little world. Can you tell us what happened to the papers that were in this envelope? Father signed them and sent them back, I believe. Um, did he follow the instructions? Sending in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp. This is a rather important matter. Give your answer some thought. What do you mean you received it? Did I do something wrong? Y you didn't use that stamp because it was dangerous, correct? Deadly poison on the back, atroquinine! A moment, her forehead. You can't force an answer upon the witness. Now then, perhaps you would tell me, Fräulein Vera, where did you receive this stamp? Is something wrong? It was beautiful. Ah, oh, you mean it was one of those commemorative stamps? How many times are you willing to draw the exact same thing over and over again? You're wasting paper, man. I mean, yeah, sure, flex that you can freaking recreate the same thing over and over. To the exact same detail, the same happy face, the same stamp, the same whatever other thing you draw, but come on, man, we get your point. Yes, I think it was. So, you don't know about the poison. <laughs> I guess not. Trap failed by chance. My mistake. Thanks to this commemorative stamp. Hmm, quite the close call. Had it been different, she would have been the one who was dead. And Misham, your father would be very, very mad. You mean you moved to where the current Drew studio is? Yes, we saw very few people there. I began drawing picture books. A single job had tied them to the criminal underworld. I think Mr. Mesham wished to reduce their visibility in the world at large. When we had to meet someone for some reason, Father posed as the creator of the work. So that was the real essence of the artist, Drew Mesham. He did the work and he supplied the face. So, you really didn't know anything, did you? You had no idea how much danger you were in. Sad face. Nope. Seriously, what the hell is that? Apparently not. About this commemorative stamp. Did you tell us more about it? It was very pretty. And more than that. Yes? It was a picture of people I liked at the time. Is something new? <laughs> Apparently, we've got some cross-examination yet ahead of us. You'd be so kind as to continue your testimony, Fräulein. That was a picture of my oh my god! Um, magicians? I love mysterious things. I always have. Even though she fainted when she saw Mr. Hat. You're confusing mysterious with freaky. Father took me when I was very young. It was a great magic show. I loved it so much. See, see, isn't magic great? Fine, great, yeah, sure. No need to get all excited. But the magic truth, we saw disbanded soon after. I was quite sad. Did she just say what I think she said? 
magic truth. Or have I heard that before? The red envelope came after she completed her first job. It makes it a letter from her client, whoever wanted a forgery made. Apollo! We're close. We just have to be piece together the parts. A deadly weapon in a red envelope. And the path it took to, Drew Mi to take Drew Misham's life. Oh my god, please stop that. Stop! Oh my god! Okay. I'm supposed to present something, aren't I? Okay, how about the ticket instead? Objection! There we go. Those magicians you like. Was it this bunch? Apollo, they're not a bunch! Hmm, I see. Still, I have to wonder. Why include a commemorative stunt like that in a business letter? Good question. Well, pretty stunts are always better and you can't beat Troop Grammarie. But the whole murder plan was a failure because of it. Ironic, don't you think? Prosecutor Gavin? Prosecutor Gavin? Gram? Grammarie? What's with Gavin? Might I ask just one question of this witness? In your testimony just now, you stated this was your first work that was other than a painting? Please, tell me. What exactly did you make? Can I ask why? No! Answer the question! Now! Yeah. Prosecutor Gavin! You're usually not the one whose volume concerns me. Yes, it is unbecoming of me. I apologize. But, I must know. Please, Miss Misham, tell me. It was a book. A single page in a book. A book? Please be more specific. It was a handwritten book. Like, like a diary. No! I don't know! What's wrong with Prosecutor Gavin? He looks like he just saw a ghost! Miss Misham, this book. Is there a picture of a silk hat on the back cover? Yes or no? <laughs> How? How did you know? <laughs> Prosecutor Gavin, the defendant is answering all of your questions. Stop badgering her. He's told you nothing, has he? Your soiled, sullied mentor. Nothing? Sullied? Who? Phoenix Wright. Who else? Daddy? He never told you about the trial seven years ago. But how he came to lose his attorney's badge. It was a certain piece of evidence that decided his fate, you know. A certain diary. On the back, it bore the mark of a silk hat. What? Oh yeah, it's all coming together now. Phoenix Wright tossed out of the profession by false evidence. And the forger who made that evidence. Was this girl standing right in front of me? Vera, you must tell us! The evidence you made was used in the trial seven years ago. Who asked Drew Misham? You, to forge that evidence! For all our sake, who was it? We only met once. You, you met the client? Well, who was it? 
It was. It was. What's going on with Vera? She's staring at Prosecutor Gavin's face again. Guess what? Is there something about me? Oh no! Revenge! That's what Phoenix wanted. According to Gavin, at least. I remember clearly. I remember who gave me the book. The diary. Who was it? <coughs> Vera! Poison? Is she dead? Bruh! Long road to the truth takes us to the record of another trial. Ooh, Phoenix. In some ways, that was the starting point of it all. And that is where we must go. Find the whole truth. Bruh! Showdown time. I lost. It's only a game of poker. A game I've played for a long time. And only lost twice. Who was the first? The man I killed, of course. Well... Seems I've found the partner I've been looking for all along. Over a game of cards. Why, yes. Over a game of cards. That was how we first met. Seven years ago. Doesn't even have his signature spiky hair anymore in the present. He wears a beanie and hides it. Uh, I guess we're taking on a new trial now. Shady and Magnifi. Wait! Shady! Shady Smith? Oh! Oh my god! That's her... that's her victim, right? Yep. Let me look at that again. Oof. Whew, okay. It's been a long time since I've felt like such a rookie. Uh, try and relax. Ah, good morning, Mr. Enigmar. 
I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I received the files from your previous attorney only yesterday. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure I'm prepared. I understand. I am asking the impossible of you. Yes, well, you haven't really told me what happened yet. All we did was play cards. And that was enough. Actually, it wasn't. Trust me. Hello, Truce. Oh, morning, Daddy! Oh, I'm so glad you came. You okay, Daddy? They picking on you? Ah, <laughs> I am fine, as always. This old boy here is here to help me after all. That's young man to you. Good morning. That's a cute outfit you have on. Thanks. My first show's today, after all. Oh, I'm sure it is. What else are you talking about? Oh, old boy. Well, huh, me? Look what he started. Um, uh, here. Seems fate's clock will make me wait a little longer. At least, only less than ten swift minutes remain. To all those who have supported me in my life's work, I give thanks. Farewell. Magnifi Grammary. Oh shit! What's this? I don't know. I just got it over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with spiky hair. They said it was really important. That's the forged evidence. What's this? A memo for you or some such? Hmm. Not from the looks of it. What is this? It's a page from someone's diary. I'll give it a read later. Well, how do you feel about the trial today? We'll get through it, somehow. Nice. Incidentally, the prosecutor today is a new guy, I hear. Ah, an easy win then, yes? Calling him a true thoroughbred in the history of the prosecutor's office? Of course. There's one of those every year. Oh, there's one of those every year. The switching of attorneys just before the trial. I know it is a difficult situation I put you in. But allow me to say one thing, Mr. Wright. Yes? They will not be able to pronounce me guilty today. So do your best, but do not worry. First time a defendant's ever given me a pep speech. I'll do what I can. <laughs> I see you do not understand. You see, it will be impossible for them to declare a verdict. It impossible? Yes. Isn't that right, Trucy? Yep, you bet, Daddy. My first look at the case was only yesterday. The information I was given was a tad bit lacking, to be honest. Still, I'll do what I can. For their sake. I believe the curtains will be lifting any time now. I am in your capable hands, Mr. Wright. Um, I hate the voice I gave him. My client is Shady Enigmar. Known to the world as Zack Grammary. A wildly popular magician. Star of Group Trammery. Troop Grammary. Troop... Group Trammery. Amazing. <laughs> His mentor, Magnifi Grammarie, was a rare breed of magician. Single-handedly ushered in a golden age of stage magic until he was shot dead. Zach Grammarie is the suspect. Ah, uh, but I already know who the real villain in all this is. <coughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Shady Enigma. The defense is ready, your honor. Is the prosecution ready? I was just thinking, is this all what all the fuss is about? Bit of a buzzkill, really. Buzzkill? Is this some new kind of crime? What of the worst? This is a trial, Jia. Where are the sweaty palms, the pounding hearts? The governor's concert's got ten times the thrill. This gig's got. Who were you again? Clavier. Clavier Gavin. I came. Get the party started. Legally, Jack. Gavin, 
The defense attorney? Christoph Gavins? Ah, figures my bro's more famous in this part of town. Javier Gavin. The entire for the mega hit man, the Gaviners. You're after your league, rock boy. I know what you're thinking. You're out of your league, rock boy. True. My debut single, 13 years hard time for love, went platinum overnight. But that's just a hobby to me compared to this, ja. Talkative, aren't you? I like your effective Euro rock accent, by the way. I'm just getting warmed up. Her attorney, right? Perhaps you would be so kind as to fill us in on the case. Act tongue, baby. Time to call on the opening act. What's his name again? Ah, yes. Detective Gumshoe. Hit it! Yeah! Gumshoe! And you are? Hey, you were the one who called me up here, sir. Name's Dick Gumshoe. I'm a homicide detective down at the precinct. Detective Gunshu, long time no see. Hey, you! Uh huh, me? Today's the day, pal. Today I win and you lose. I got confidence in my testimony today, see? Well, you normally lack confidence in your testimony. <laughs> Poor Gumshu. Her detective. This is my stage, candy antics. Ah. All this hey you ing and such. And I could care less about your history together. Ugh. Very well, Detective Gumshoe, if you would, please tell us about the case at hand. Happened six days back in a room at the General Hospital. <laughs> That's my best impression of the English dub Phoenix, uh, got Detective Gumshoe. But uh, this was the voice I gave him when we first played, and I still think it's the better voice for him. It happened six days back in a room at the General Hospital. The facts are as simple as they come. Here's the crime scene. The victim was a patient, asleep in a hospital bed. The killer comes in, puts a pistol to his forehead, and bam, lights out. Them's the facts. Hmm. Not so long ago, the victim Magnifi Grammarie was a famous man. He had the entire country under his magical spell, as it were. Ah, yes. The Great Magician. He retired years ago, though. They say the name's Magnifi, the one of my generation, and you'd be lucky to get a blank stare. Yes, though I'm sure the youngsters today know his disciples even better. I dare say Troop Grammary has made quite a name for themselves. Anyhow, the retired Magnifi bids Magnifi's been in the hospital for the last year. Hmm, what was it? A malignant tutor or something? Doing something to his liver, I think? Oh. Oh. Bullshit. Fuck you. God damn it. Fuck me. Oh shit. Yeah, baby. Fuck all. Dear God. Oh my ya. Shang Shang Shu. Shimmy Shimmy ya. Obladi Oblada. Do 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 de da da da. I'm gonna stop now. God damn it, they really are tying everything together. Somehow, conveniently. And how does Apollo tie into all this in his bracelet? A malignant tumor, perhaps? In other words, he had liver cancer. He had only three months left to live, in fact. Hmm. The facts do seem simple enough, but something's not right. The victim was already climbing a three-month stairway to heaven. Why not wait for him to knock, knock, knock on heaven's door? Why shoot him? Couldn't put it quite so lyrically, but it's true. Uh, whoops. Why make the effort to commit murder when the victim was about to die? Incidentally, the victim had a serious case of diabetes. Diabetes? In fact, he was about to shoot up with insulin. When he was shot with a pistol, the syringe was bad at the crime scene. Chronic diabetes and cancer. As much as it pains me to say it, the victim was clearly at the end of his life.
Hmm, I believe the question before us is clear then. Why did the killer have to shoot this dying man? What reason could he have had? Very well, detective. Perhaps you can enlighten us to the circumstances of the shooting. Yes, sir. I feel like my voice for Gavin suddenly changed. I thought I I didn't think I should bother changing his voice. He should just be the same as he still is. Young people rarely change voices. Seven year seven years don't do that. Usually, I think maybe. Actually, the victim kind of ordered the defendant to do him in. A few days before it happened, the victim sent a letter ordering his own murder. The defendant did what was asked of him, and shot the old man in the forehead. The bullet was fired from the pistol found at the scene, no doubt about it. And a pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir. So, uh, it, it was a suicide. W what You're saying the victim ordered his own shooting? Those are the facts. I have here this letter in question. Very unusual indeed. Although, could such a thing as a letter really cause one to pull a trigger, I wonder? I believe the answer to that question can be found at the end of the letter. Ah, you cannot refuse. We both know the reason why. Detective Gunshu, can you explain this to the court? Unfortunately, even the defendant won't say a peep about that bit, sir. One thing bothers me about this. Why didn't he just say 11? Why have him come at 11.05 without some specific reason? The devil is in the details, her Tony. Well, was there some reason? As it turns out, there was. Every night for half an hour, starting at 11 o'clock, the victim, Magnifique Grammary, was given an IV. An IV? There it is in the picture, off to the side of the bed. At 11 o'clock, a doctor would come to set up the IV. 30 minutes later, he would come back for the empty bag. It's happened every night without fail. So that was the only time they could meet without the chance of an untimely interruption. During his IV. Very well. Shall we begin? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination if you would. Is this reason he couldn't refuse, I wonder? You have at least mentioned it to me. Wait, this is... <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention, but isn't this the OST of the first game? How epic. Ah, Capcom. Why are you trying to use nostalgia? Just because he got the letter doesn't mean he went through with it. Oh, I disagree. The victim was indeed shot in the forehead after all. Just as he had commanded. Could be a setup. But let's not be in such a hurry. Maybe we should let the witness stop for a change. Thanks, pal. <laughs> Fine. I can play it slow as well as I can play it fast. On with the testimony, Detective Gumshoe. I need to clean my... Although I don't use the trackpad, it... So dirty feeling. How is it so dirty? And this letter was sent by the victim? There it is! Gotcha! You're all mine this time, pal! Huh? I had handwriting checked out, of course! It's the victim's! No mistake! Ah, I see. Ah, 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 ah. Score one for the boys! I didn't lose, I was just ascertaining the facts. So why am I so annoyed? <laughs> <laughs> but, a letter ordering your own death. Things aren't what they used to be, I guess. Not sure this is exactly commonplace even now, your honor. So anyway, this will keep going while I'm ahead. Uh, is the court records not gonna be updated? Okay. How can you be so sure? Hey, you gotta learn to stop relying on people to do your thinking for you, pal. 
Learn to think for yourself. Get that noggin cranking. You fail to grasp the concept of questioning, detective. First, we got this letter. It says shoot in the forehead, loud and clear. I can see that, but I still wouldn't do it. Well, maybe you need to grow yourself a backbone, pal. You fail to grasp the concept of shooting people as bad, detective. We also found the defendant's pistol at the scene. Traces of gunpowder residue shows that it had been fired recently. Well, Mr. Wright? As far as I can tell from looking at this photo, there seems to be no issue with the prosecution's claim. Photo. Maybe there's something in there I can use. They're saying the defendant shot the victim in the forehead. I think there's a hole in the prosecution's argument. Clearly, Mr. Enigmar... Maya isn't even here at all. I wonder why. Maybe she was a training at the time or something. Uh, I'm gonna go with shot something else. Looking at this photo, another possibility occurs to me. Yes? What does the letter tell us? And the defendant had a reason he couldn't refuse his teacher's wishes. Bingo, pal. That's why the defendant popped him one in the forehead. Oh, the defense disagrees. You see, the defendant had another choice he could make. Objection. What, and you can prove that with this photo? I can prove he had choice, yes. The defendant might have fired like he was ordered. But he didn't shoot the victim's forehead. Well, let's hear what you're thinking, Mr. Wright. He didn't shoot the victim's forehead. What did the defendant shoot? The clown doll? Take a closer look. See? It's been shot in the forehead too. Oh! There's a hole in its forehead! Yes, and a hole in the prosecution's claim! Ha! Huh, didn't I suppose you have a reason as to why he'd shoot the clown doll? He didn't just shoot the doll. He shot the doll's forehead. His forehead? Ah! Let's read the orders once more, shall we? You will shoot one shot square in the forehead. Which is exactly what he did. He shot the clown doll square in the forehead. The defense has raised an intriguing possibility. That hole in the clown's forehead. It definitely looks like he was shot. They lift! Send someone to investigate this matter! I admit, I'm impressed, but expected nothing less. Still, this doesn't mean he didn't shoot the victim. Perhaps he did have to shoot a forehead as ordered. The letter says nothing about whose forehead. This was the only way he had to follow his orders without taking a life. Hmm. The bullet hole in the clown doll's forehead does demand an explanation. It might very well be a clue. Yet Prosecutor Gavin is right. It alone does not prove the defendant's innocence. You cannot say for sure the defendant didn't shoot the victim. So sorry, Mr. Wright. How sad it is to see the mighty fall. How sad it is to see the novice's overconfidence. He doesn't realize just how big this little hole is going to get. Detective Gumshoe, please take this newfound fact into account as you continue your testimony. 
So what if you shot the clown? You still shot the victim, pal. So let me get this straight. You're saying my client first shot the clown, then shot the victim? Hey, not a bad summary, pal. More for confirmation than a summary, but whatever. That was really more for confirmation than a summary. But our defense attorney seems pleased enough with himself. Do these people ever miss a chance to mock me? <laughs> well, now that Mr. Wright's gotten that out of the system, shall we continue with the testimony? We didn't have time to gather all the details before coming in here. Testimony might be my only source of information. Better pay attention. Read this letter carefully. We have the gun and the evidence. Why not? Clearly this is the place with the contradiction, contradicting thing. Or maybe I'm missing something here. in the middle of the hospital, anyone could have come in at any moment. 
Yeah, but no one did come, did they, pal? Besides, it's what I would have done. Always look before you shoot, I say. Might I suggest we move on? This is getting us nowhere. Patience, we'll get there sooner than you think. Very well, please continue your testimony. Detective. And then, 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 then. I mean, this pistol, the one in the crime scene photo. Ballistic markings. <clears throat> what pilot sound has been stuck in your head all this time, pal? You ever heard of Zack and Valance quick draw shoot him? Huh? What's that? What are the dependent specialties? That can balance that on either side of a girl. Then they shoot, but the bullet don't hit her. Instead, they hit everything else on stage. This was one of the pistols they used on their show. Get a great design, huh? The kids love it. Many boys and girls joined the police because of that pistol I hear. You know, that would explain a lot about the police force. Troop Grammarie stopped doing that act a while ago. The old man held on to that pistol ever since. The court would like to see the pistol in question. You got it, sir. Here she is. Well, this truly is a blast from the past. It's a stage pistol for magic shows, see? But it can fire real bullets. Hmm, it looks so much bigger in real life than on TV. Yeah, but it can only hold one round. By the way, the pistol's firing chamber is empty. And it shows traces of having been fired recently. So were any fingerprints found on the gun? Unfortunately, no. Of course, the defendant is known for wearing gloves. We might say that a lack of fingerprints is in fact a fingerprint of its own. Aha! Intriguing point! Well made. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not well made. Not intriguing. In any case, the courts accept this into evidence. Finally, there we go. My grandchild would get a kick out of seeing this. But now it's time to return to our testimony. Muy impossible, Detective Gumsu. Muy impossible. The trickiest cases often seem the simplest. Prosecutor Gavin, you missed the bullet hole in the clown's forehead. If you hadn't missed that, you might have come to a very different conclusion. Understand? Y yeah, but like I just said, pal. After he shot the clown in the forehead, he went and... Did nothing of the sort to the victim. The pistol proves he could not. The murder weapon? How? Quite simple, your honor. This pistol only holds one bullet at a time. Ah! If he had shot the clown in the forehead, he could have shot the victim too! Yeah! <laughs> That's not a contradiction, not even close. All he had to do was reload the pistol after the first shot. Oh, where did he get the extra bullet? They're not so easy to come by, you know. To claim the defendant had one ready and prove to us how he got it. Ugh. <laughs> I had a feeling this wasn't over yet. No, this party's just getting started. Now I've proven anything yet beyond my good looks and startling record sales. And utter lack of humility. Hmm. Oh, what's this? It seems that the prosecution has another witness prepared. Like I said, her detective was just a warm-up act. Uh. Now that the audience has gotten a taste of what's to come, they're ready. Ready for what? From a decisive witness, of course. A witness who you will find can prove one thing for us. It was Zack Grammary who shot the victim in the forehead. Very well. We will pause for a 15-minute recess. This might be my lucky break. I'll need that 15 minutes to talk to my client, Zach. Court is adjourned. Oh.
Okay, mind telling me what the fuck is going on? Anyone? Please? 